Hi. While looking around eBay, I came across this, which is a Fleur digital multimeter. Now, it was advertised that, uh, on eBay as spares a repair. I think I paid around £80 for it. I think they retail for around about 500 so we'll see if uh, I've got a bargain or whether uh, it's uh, unfixable. So, it was described as nothing really happens on it, just the screen lights up white. So we'll pop some batteries in and we'll see what it does. And yeah, the screen just seems to light up white and then goes off. Sounds like we get a few uh, noises on some of the buttons occasionally. Well, that's about it. Right, let's see how it comes apart then. There's a little pull tab thing here. All right, it looks like it's uh, just a little battery holder. It must be for a rechargeable battery that goes in. Now one thing I've just noticed uh, down there, there's, it looks like a USB port. So I wonder if that's for diagnostics or for uh, debugging or something. Or firmware update perhaps, I don't know. But uh, yeah, there's, there's definitely looks like a USB port down there. Uh, I can see some rubber things around the outside we'll see if we can get those out and we've got some Phillips screws under it so I shall just grab a Phillips screwdriver maybe a slightly bigger one So, what do we have? That must be the uh, Fleur infrared camera module there that goes onto this sub board. Obviously, this bit here looks like the multimeter part. I've got a ribbon cable at the top there. And we've got access to this USB port now. And we've got a little laser targeting laser here for the uh, for the infrared camera now I don't know whether it's gonna be better just to disconnect this module for now because obviously we don't want to break it um, Right, so that's that disconnected now. And that leaves you with this sub board. Now, I've just noticed something. Just uh, this connector here at the top. It looks like it's in a, a slight angle. Surely it's not just something like a connector not plugged in properly. Well, it does look like it's plugged in at a bit of an angle, you know. Surely it can't be that simple. Hmm. The only thing is to test it. Um, 
I think we've got to put the thing half back together. Well, that would be good if it's uh, just that. I don't think it is, but we might just try it just in case. I'll pull the little laser back in. these screws out they seem like um, they've got a bit of a retaining clip or something possibly on them because they didn't want to come out all the way it's just making it a bit awkward to put them uh, back together right that'll do let's just pop some batteries back in we'll just see if that's uh, if that's cured because if it has that'd be amazing that I mean it wouldn't be a very fast uh, very uh, long repair video but uh, seeing as I haven't got an infrared camera and I thought a thermal camera I thought one might come in useful so let's see if it does anything different now and no it's the same nice okay well it was worth a try you never know module again and we'll continue a couple of small screws here we'll take these out This looks like it could be the uh, the main processor. Now I think the uh, the main processor is actually working because the fact it's it's powering up and then it seems to be sort of shutting down, and also it's detecting key presses and beeping. So to me that means the uh, the processor actually seems to be running. the microscope in on this so we can actually see the uh, the circuit board I think before I bring the microscope in though I'll uh, we'll take the rest of these circuit boards out just in case there's any damaged components or anything I've got a feeling there's not going to be but it's worth a uh, worth a look and if not it'll make an interesting turn video Right now does this board unplug? It looks like there's a connector. I'm not sure if it's a plug or whether it's just sold that straight to the board. I'm fairly sure it looks like a plug though. screw under there but right. well, I think I'll take the rest of these screws out and then uh, we'll see if we can get the whole board out
Nice. So we've got the screen there, which has got a part number on. I'm kind of half suspecting that there might be a fault with the screen on this. I mean, it might not be, but that's me kind of thoughts. Um, can we remove this? It looks like it should come out as a screw there, right. I've missed a screw. Right, so there's another processor or microcontroller here. Now I think that one is going to deal with all the uh, the measurements and things on the uh, on the multimeter side. So I think pretty much what we've got is this is the meter and this is the um, the thermal camera and display board. So obviously it, it takes the signals from the um, from the multimeter side of things, sends them into this, and this is what's responsible for displaying the image on the screen and for processing the signals from the uh, the thermal camera. So, what could cause the problem? Um, yeah, see, I think it's either going to be something on this or the screen. Now, there is some components on the screen. But there's not a lot. Yeah, see, I'm kind of thinking to myself, could it be the screen that's at fault? KD 023D 2. So that's the uh, that's the part number on the uh, on the screen. I wonder if we can obtain one of those from anywhere. Even just to sort of test as a swap out. Right, so we'll bring the microscope in and we'll have a look over this board, see if we can see anything. Right, so this is where the meter probes plug into uh, looks like we've got a couple of resistors there and some diodes and then we've got the contacts for the selector knob and then we've got the buttons on the uh, keypad um, a couple of resistors there We've got an IC here. Uh, I'll just see if I can get that a bit in focus there. And it's uh, S24CS0. I'm not sure what it is, but I suspect it's probably going to be some kind of serial EEPROM or serial flash. That's kind of the number it sort of looks like. Uh, again, we've got a couple of diodes up here. There's another chip which uh, again is the same as the last one we just looked at there, which looks, I say, like some kind of serial EEPROM maybe. A transistor up there, a couple of capacitors. It looks like some kind of resistive divider type thing going on there. And possibly another one just underneath it. Uh, what else have we got? I've got a few capacitors around here, which I think are possibly for a power supply on the other side of the board, but we'll have a look at that shortly. Uh, we've got a big a 10 meg resistor there, possibly. Um, and we've got the IC, which I think is responsible for the measurement meter side of the, uh, of the unit which uh, is a BTC K201 right we'll flip the board over there's not a lot on the other side I think it's mainly a couple of little power supplies by the look of it I'll just adjust the focus a bit there so I've got a, an inductor there um, a small IC which is probably either a uh, 
a MOSFET or that's what generates the supply uh, and there's another IC there so whether or not that IC is responsible for creating the two supplies or, or whatever I'm not 100% and again a couple of more capacitors around there we've got the buzzer and I think the only other component on this side is an IC which uh, once I actually get to it where's it gone here we go uh, it looks like a microchip I just noticed the logo there microchip uh, IC uh, let's try and get the focus on that so it is a MCP six double oh two by the look of it like I say I'm not sure what that is uh, perhaps I'll get the data sheet and if um, if I can find the data sheet I'll pull that up on the screen and that's pretty much it that's on this side of the board I'll get the uh, the other board which again isn't a lot on it um, so on this side we've got uh, a USB socket And that's the connector that plugs into the uh, board we've just looked at uh, a couple of capacitors and that's pretty much it on this side of the board we'll flip it over um, I hold it that way that's where the laser plugs into for the aiming and it looks like it's controlled by a transistor just here this is where the thermal camera plugs into and it looks like there's a zero ohm resistor which could be for uh, protection for that uh, what else we've got a small IC there I'm not sure what that's for but it looks like it goes off into the display if I find any info on that I'll pull it up on the screen that's the connector for the display I've got a, a few resistors there. Um, those are hundred k, one hundred and four. And what else? There's an eight megahertz crystal. That'll be for the microcontroller, which is just here. And if I just spin this board around, we'll be able to get the number a bit better. And it is a pick. 32MX470F512L and that's pretty much what uh, I think controls the display and is responsible for the um, processing of the thermal imaging sensor and that's pretty much it there's not really a great deal to it right we'll pull the microscope out of the way I think what I'll do, I'll half reassemble this and we can see if we can get the display where it's um, in, a, in a place where we can measure some voltages and things just to see if we can work out what's going on. So I'm going to put a, pop a couple of screws back in this. Just to hold the board in place because we need to have some contacts with the uh, the switch onto the circuit board and if we don't it's not going to switch on so I'll just put a couple of screws in should do for that and we'll plug this little board in I'll try and get the display plugged back in and we'll 
we'll just see if it powers up like that. Nice. Right, so we can get the display powered up now. And it just seems to just be in a sort of kind of boot loop thing going on there where it just keeps on flashing white. So what I think's happening is, like I say, I'm, I think this display has failed. And I think the process is trying to communicate with the display, not seeing the display and it's just trying to reboot it again. I wonder if it's worth connecting the score button. We'll just see if we get any uh, waveforms and I need these pins. But I'm fairly sure the processor itself is actually working. Let's see if we can get a ground on there. Right, so we'll uh, we'll have a look on the scope and see if we get any signals going to the display. Let's try this via here and we'll power it up. Alright, might have to adjust the scale a little bit. See if we got anything over here. I'm just looking to see if there's any date. Yeah, there's some data or something being transmitted there. Just seen something. Let's try one of these other pins. Yeah, I've just seen something there uh, go there as well. Let's try one of these ones. What's happening on that one? Without a data sheet for the display, I have had a look on the internet, but I can't actually see any numbers relating to this display. Just trying this IC here, see what we'll get. Oh, we're getting some kind of waveform there. Let's try this one. Looks like it's got something to do with the backlight, I think, because uh, the waveform seems to change with the um, with the intensity of the backlight. Yeah, so it looks like some kind of PWM for the backlight, that chip there. It's a bit hard to actually get the, uh, the probes onto some of these pins with them being that close together. Well, yeah, I've just got a, a burst of data there on the scope there. So I think it's actually sending stuff to the LCD. Just the LCD itself is not working. Um, I wonder if uh, FLU supply replacement parts or not. I'll try dropping them an email and uh, we'll see what uh, response we get. Because uh, I'm, I'm about 90% sure it's it's the, uh, the LCD that's at fault on this. Now one thing I didn't do was just to check the uh, voltages uh, coming out of this power supply. And they seem to come in on this on these pins here. So uh, that one. So we've got a 1.2 volts, which when I've had a look, that's apparently what you need for the um, the lepton core for the uh, FLIR camera. And if I 
I'll just go on to this capacitor here. We've got 2.7 volts. Now, I wasn't sure if that was a bit low uh, for this chip, but when I've looked at the spec of it, apparently that's the um, within the, the voltage range of the chip. Um, so, I think the supplies are all right, but again, I'm not 100%. I know the supply for the screen comes in, uh, I think it's these two pins here, let's just try to get the probe on, so we've got 2.7 volts going to the screen as well, um, like I say I think I'm going to email uh, FLI or, or Fleur or whoever it is and uh, see if they can provide me with one of these screens because I've had a look on the internet and I can't find that part. So I've had a, a few uh, emails between me and uh, Teledyne it is, who uh, make these things and uh, it sort of goes like this, I basically emailed them said uh, you know I bought a, a faulty meter to repair, I've tracked down what I believe is the fault, I want to order a screen, can you supplies with one? And I got a reply back uh, saying pretty much uh, Thank you for contacting uh, support. We apologise for the inconvenience, but we do not sell spare parts to fix any of our products. If service is needed, the meter will have to be sent to us to be fixed. Which I thought, well, okay. So, uh, I sent an email uh, back because I've done a bit of uh, searching on the internet and I found a display. While it's not exactly the same number, it's very similar. Um, so anyway, my reply back to them was, uh, Hi, thank you for the response, but I'm a little disappointed. Uh, what happened to a right to repair? Uh, explained I run a YouTube channel and, uh, you know, sort of like I've sourced another display. So we'll see how that goes on. And uh, obviously I'll be supplying these emails on the video. And I did get a reply back saying... Uh, what was it? Uh, unfortunately, because of company policies and proprietary information, which I don't know what proprietary information would be on supplying a LCD display that they don't make, uh, we do not offer spare parts or wiring diagrams for our products. The DM166 has a 10-year warranty from the purchase date, and if you can provide an invoice, we can start a service request or replace the meter if it's not fixable. So, it seems like they were totally unwilling to help. So, another company named and shamed, a bit like the uh, the solar inverter repair that uh, had a similar response to. Uh, if you haven't seen that video, I'll put a link to it up here. So, you can check that one out uh, once we've finished this video. So, I've found a display that looks very similar. It's a KDO 23C dash one so uh once that arrives from china uh, i'll just bring up the uh the listing of that so you can have a look i've got it on ally express we'll see if it's compatible and if it works right so the new display has arrived and it is a slightly different number um as you can see the original is the kdo 23d dash two and the one I managed to get a hold of is a 23C01. Now, according to the specs on the uh, the meter, it's a 2.4 inch display, and it's 320 by 240 pixels. But the KDO23 means it's actually 2.3 inches, not 2.4 inches. So uh, they want to get the uh, the specifications right, don't they? Which is partly one of the reasons why I had trouble finding a one that was similar. So I think we'll uh, we'll try this. One thing I did notice as well, uh, the two pins, uh, you might be to focus on the camera here, the pins number one and two are actually linked to ground. They're actually linked together on this display. And on this one, pin number two actually goes to another track. Uh, and when I've looked on the circuit board, it looks like it goes to a pin that's controlled from the microcontroller. Now, I did put the scope on it, and it didn't seem like it toggled it at all, or it, uh, you know, put any voltage to it. So, I'm hoping this one's going to work. So, we'll just have to keep our fingers crossed. Right, let me 
I shall bring the meter back in. And put this display up. I'll not connect the uh, the camera module up, we'll just see if we get anything on the display first. And here goes. Yes! FLIR. Right, that looks uh, promising. Now, it's probably in a reboot loop because I haven't got the camera module connected. Oh, let's uh, see if we can connect the camera module up. Um, hopefully... It'll settle down. It's a bit awkward this because of the uh, the shape of the ribbon cable. I wonder if it's easier to take the board out and then get the cable plugged in. Just kind of leave that light there. Uh, I'll see that fuel that will power it up and we'll see. Oh, I heard something making noise. Oh. Well, I heard a little clunk click. Sound like from the camera module. <sighs> I don't know if there's more than one issue with this then. If it's something with that pin, hmm, well, that's a little bit disappointing. I thought would uh, fix it. It's definitely getting further than what it was. I don't know if it's got anything to do with that um, with that pin. Like I say, with the display being slightly different, I don't know whether it might be getting a different reading back or something. Let's see, I think these were new batteries, but let's try changing these batteries just in case. I mean, I would have thought it would show something like battery low or, or whatever. Because I was messing around with this a bit before. And apparently they're supposed to eat the batteries, so let's just... Uh, on the off chance. No. Ah. I thought I might have had it there. Right, let's have a think on it. 
So we've got this kind of boot loop thing going on and you know I'm thinking well is it the display, is it the uh, the IR sensor, is there a problem on the board, is it the power supplies? Uh, so I'm at a bit of a loss with it but I decided to uh, email the uh, the company who I got the display off just to see if they could obtain the original display because like I said this one's slightly different or if they could get us a data sheet for it just to see if there was uh, you know what the difference with this one pin is and the kind the email is over a data sheet for the uh, original display and pin number two which is missing off this one on the original display it's uh, allocated as something called TE uh, tearing effect is what it says uh, I'll, I'll pull this up on the screen so we can actually see it properly um, anyways tearing effect output pin to synchronize MPU to frame writing activated by software command so pretty much what that pin does is when the CPU writes something to the screen when it's finished I guess uh, before it's ready to update again the screen says okay well, I'm done processing that now send us the next one and I think because the CPU isn't getting that message back it's uh, rebooting itself and obviously the original screen was just totally faulty because that was just lighting up white and at least we're actually getting some kind of picture on this one I've even took the uh, the IR oh, well, inf well um, it's not infrared is it it's a uh, thermal thermal camera out uh, I'll just bring that up so you can have a, a quick look at that it's uh, quite a nice uh, quite a nice thing I mean it's got a little shutter on the front there as well and the shutter was going on and off it's in a little socket there um, I think spark fun sell these and these alone just the actual sensor are about uh, $220 or so so anyway back to the uh, the problem here so I'm thinking well if all it does is just says to the CPU right okay I'm ready to send data what just happens if we just send it just a signal I mean if if the screen was halfway through writing and it updates it's not going to be the end of the world uh, and I don't think it'll really make that much difference so what I've done um, the uh, PWM signal for the backlight I've actually sold at a wire from that so basically all that does is just gives out a square wave constantly and I've wired it to where pin number two goes to the CPU so let's uh, see what it makes of that if anything because at least it's going to be getting the signal that's going to be changing this is me logic anyway and uh, we'll see what happens well, let's plug this uh, sensor back in I'll well, try to there we go I've actually, uh, when I sent the email, I'm waiting for him to get back to us to see if he can actually source the original display. But, you know, if uh, if he can't, well, we'll see what this does. And hopefully, fingers crossed. Ho, 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 ho! I've just seen it. I've just seen this. Yes! I think that's worked. <laughs> I think me little bodgers uh, tricked the CPU into stop stop resetting and we've actually got a picture, uh, well it's shown voltage, um, how do we get the, oh, <laughs> I think we've got the infrared working as well, look, I don't know if that's coming through on the camera there, but uh, yeah, right, I think that uh, little bodge might have just paid off. Right, I've got to try and get the uh, the thing back together now then. Right, well this is a result. Oh, I'm so pleased about that. I was uh, thinking like, you know, is it, are we actually going to be able to repair this? Is it a software problem? Is it uh, a problem with the art, the um, with the sensor? Is it the voltages? Is it because I've got no schematic for this? And the company weren't very forthcoming, as you, as you saw earlier with the email. So, um, 
<laughs> wow, I can't believe that works. Right, um, yeah. Yes, get in. I don't know where I put the back for it though. <laughs> I think I've lost the back for it somewhere. Um, where's the back gone? Ah, oh, I forgot to put the fuse back in. Ah, hang on, I'll put the fuse back in. Ah, sorry, I just have to take these two screws out. I thought I'd take the rest of them out, but it's just. Uh, I think this little compartment just comes off. I was, I was thinking, oh, let's take all them screws back out again. There we go. Oh, I'm really pleased with this. I'm glad I got this fixed. It was one of those ones where I was thinking, like, mm, you know, is it, uh, is it going to be a a repair or is it just going to be a, a, a tear down video right get the back on and let's get a flat bladed screwdriver <laughs> nice I haven't got a clue how you use it though. What we've got here? Mode? What does that do? Nothing? What does it? Oh, no. Range? Ah, that was for the meter. What's this do? Oh, different colours. That's for the laser, so the laser little dot works there. Um, does it measure voltage or resistance though? Let's uh, get the leads out. So I wonder if this has been faulty from the factory or something. It seems a bit odd. I see all the leads and that and stuff. Uh, Or would somebody go to the trouble to put the uh, little things back on? I don't know. I mean, if I was sending it back, I probably wouldn't. But let's. Uh... Well, it seems to work. Let's just try it on a on a transistor or something. <laughs> yeah, I think it. Uh, I think it all seems to work. Excellent. Well, there we go then. Repairing a flirt digital thermal camera wadgy thingy, whatever you want to call it. Right, well, I hope you enjoyed that video. Like I say, it's uh, it's quite a result, so I'm very pleased with that. Uh, if you want to uh, see more like it, please subscribe. Any comments or questions, please leave it in the comments section below. And as always, have a great day. Thanks for watching.